Wilton Mill kicks off the new karting season for the rebranded Easy Kart Championship, now the one-make Art UK Championship Series. It promises to be, as always, challenging, competitive and a whole lot of fun. Before the racing kicks off, we caught up with series promoter Andy Cox earlier to talk us through the changes for the 2017 season. We uh, decided uh, with consultation with the drivers that we would change the name of the championship to Birrell Art UK Series. Obviously it's a Birrell Art product. Um, Easy Kart was, um, that was uh, an idea of Mr. Oscar Sala, uh, well, 13 years ago now. Uh, and the, it really it's about perception. Um, some people looking to come into our championship think that easy cart sounds, you know, um, not great. Uh, doesn't really depict what we do here because it's far from easy. Um, the grids are as tight as ever. Uh, the equipment is uh, very, very equal. Um, so, you know, we're, we're trying to rebrand. We've got other things coming along with Birrell Art, uh, with, with rental carts, indoor circuits that we're going to be starting with and that's going to really knit together with uh, our product line in this championship and then obviously into international racing uh, in WSK and stuff like that so that's the reasoning behind it. Okay and a few years ago of course you, you were MSA you went uh, independent so you're independent kart racing now but um, there's still a, a link between the two isn't there it's worth saying I think that uh, you know this is a great way to get into karting and at the end of the day that's what we want more people in karting whether it's MSA or it's not MSA that's irrelevant I think uh, and this is a great series to get people into the sport isn't it? No, absolutely we're in a time of uh, I think great transition um, we, uh, you know, uh, independent kart racing, MSA kart racing, you know, really for me that doesn't matter. Um, we actually need more people coming into the sport of karting. Um, Formula One for sure for me has a bit of a responsibility uh, in that um, because I don't think, you know, I was lucky enough to uh, be around, um, you know, Jensen. Uh, Button and, and Lewis back in the 90s. I know I don't look that old, but <laughs> I was working then. And um, yeah, I don't think we're going to see another Jensen and another Lewis until the whole system changes. Um, you know, lots of people want to do football. There's lots of scouts for that. And uh, there's a chance of actually, you know, making a career out of that, even though the percentages are still small. Um, but we need to make sure that kids coming into karting uh, and more importantly their parents, uh, they're doing it for fun, uh, they're realistic and understand that there isn't, uh, you know, at the moment, uh, a, a, a gold pot at the end of the rainbow. Um, hopefully, with the changes in F1, um, you know, we'll see that change um, and we'll see the possibility of people actually being able to progress in racing cars with some help um, and get the talent like Lewis and Jensen obviously are. Uh, and, and, and see that happen again in the future. Until that happens, for me, you know, um, we, we, we need to try to do what we can as a series. You know, we've got a great product uh, with the Birrell Art uh, and the IAMI uh, EK engine. Um, it's affordable, uh, and that's what we need to do, focus on that. And a change in the media coverage this uh, year as well, very exciting. You've got uh, Jake Sanson, my colleague, on board Downforce Radio, going to be covering each of the rounds as well, so grandparents and aunts and uncles can, can follow the kids racing live. We'll be talking to, to Jake in just a bit, but again, what was you thinking there? I know John's stepped down, John Viger, so Jake's sort of filling that role, but he also brings the Downforce Radio brand with it as well. 
Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Again, it's all about accessibility uh, and media and reaching out to people. Um, you know, when I started karting, you know, there was no internet, there wasn't really magazines. So these days, the kids are really spoilt with what's available. Dance, Downforce Radio, um, you know, that's, uh, no one's done that before. Um, so thanks to our partnership with Jake, uh, we're going to be doing that. Uh, the stats on the YouTube videos are, is, you know, 70, 80,000 uh, views, which is phenomenal. Um, so it's really, all, what we do here with Birol Art is just try, we're trying to ignite that spark of interest for kids especially, that they want to go go-kart racing. Uh, and that's what we're all about. Jake, very exciting to see you here. You've sort of taken over the John Viger role this year, but you've brought Downforce Radio to the Beryl Art UK series. For those that don't know anything about that, how do they listen to the coverage? And, and tell us a little bit about it. Well, Downforce Radio was set up to provide racing coverage for championships that had never really had access to it before in the same sort of guise as the Formula Ones, the touring cars, the Indy cars of this world. We felt that it was important that the lower championships and those championships where drivers are moving up through the ladder of motorsport got the same level of coverage as the top grade. So that's what we created it for and that's what we're here to do, basically. People can listen in via downforceradio.com by downloading the free Spreaker application, which is free for anybody with an Apple and Android device. They can download the shows as they're broadcasted live, and it's the only British UK karting series now that receives live radio coverage there on the day. It makes everything a lot more immediate, and it means that people can follow the racing as it happens. And you've been doing the commentary for, I think, a year or two now. Uh, what are you looking forward to this year particularly? I think the, the rate of the competition is going to be particularly high this year. There are so many fantastic class acts in all four of the classes. The racing here is always guaranteed to be fantastic because every single kart is built to run equal. It comes down to the driver. The cadets are very feisty. They're taking their first steps in the world of motor racing. The juniors have got that extra level of motivation. They really want to push forward to build a proper career. So they're incredibly intense out on circuit. The elites have this amazing amount of experience behind them, but with that extra guile and gusto, they'll go for a few more choice overtaking moves, perhaps when others wouldn't, and that makes a really intense battle. And then the masters are here because they love the motor racing. They just love being out there on the circuit, being competitive, no matter what their age, no matter what their experience, and they're willing to put on a show. And this year, I genuinely think the masters could be the series to watch. Well, the Masters will be out later. Let's start with the cadets. Our two race winners from earlier on, Ella Stevens and Tom Harvey on the front row, with Nathan Ty and Milo Pilfold on the second. Ingram and Humphreys, Tomlinson and Keatley, Briley and Lilly rounding out the top ten in front of Louis Ross, way down in 11th after a difficult pre-final, alongside another novice, Jessica White. But watch right from the back, Aidan Hassan. It's wet conditions here, and in the wet, he's actually very strong. But the track is drying, and they're all on wet tyres, so it could be a very difficult race for some. As we get underway, who's going to make the jump for Crook first? Is it going to be Stevens or Harvey as they go to the first corner? A little bit of jostling. Aiden Hassan gets a little bit of a tangle there with Jessica White as they come through. We're on board with the Chesterfield-based driver, Freddie Tomlinson. And in front of us is the 76 of Charlie Humphreys. Here they come as Stevens already tries to defend. Just looking through the grid, we've got the likes of Christian Lilly and Milo Pilfold back for another go this year. And there's a spinner at the back, and I think that might be Pilfold. So he's already gone. Louis Ross and Tom Harvey are in the mix as well as they come to Ashby for the first time. Down into the right-hander. Whoops, a couple more have gone for a Burton. I think Oakley, Keatley and Louis Ross were trying to avoid. That's Oliver Elliott we're just looking at. He's not here this weekend, but he should be out in time for Shennington. Jamie Gurney, the man with the amazing Technicolor dream coat, is back for more. Dylan Briley, hoping for a stronger finish to his weekend. He's had a difficult one. The novice Aidan Hassan has been really strong in this first season. Freddie Tomlinson back for more, and he should be a hard charger. Oakley, Keatley, he's getting himself a bit of a name for himself already as a rookie and Charlie Humphreys well he's right up in the sharp end as already Ella Stevens is trying to hold up the attentions of Tom Harvey who slips through into the lead but oh big accident that's Nathan Ty into the back of Ella Stevens cart and Nathan Ty we're just looking at him now he pulls off the circuit disaster for Nathan Ty two arms in the air what was that what happened there disaster for poor Nathan Ty. He's had a really strong end to his weekend as well, but he's out of the race. Big impact, you saw the bumper flying in the air, and Nathan Ty, a very unhappy chappy, I'm afraid to say. So Tom Harvey leads in the early stages, Ella Stevens in second. That little incident with Nathan Ty, who was third, has promoted now, who's that up into third? That's Kylan Ingram, and in behind is Charlie Humphreys. So a good battle already in the early stages as they come down to Zulu through one, down the drop and into Zulu 2. 
In behind this is the battle for fifth position, Freddie Tomlinson being chased down by Louis Ross, who's on the comeback trail and doing a cracking job. Now, we need to talk about Tom Harvey out in the lead. He did a brilliant job in the earlier heat in very tricky conditions. He is the man to beat when it's a little bit wet, although in the pre-final, Ella Stevens stormed through to the victory when it suddenly rained in a... a apocalyptic fashion in the final three laps of the race. Everybody was on slick tyres and it was just a case of who stayed on the road and kept their cool for the longest. And Ella Stevens proved to be that driver. She is turning into a genuine championship contender for the 2017 season. So she's right there in behind Harvey. That's Charlie Humphreys going for the move. Great overtaking move there from Charlie Humphreys. And that is Freddie Tomlinson closing up on Louis Ross. So Ross has obviously found a way through. They come out of Christmas, down through Inkermans and up towards Ashby. But a great move at Christmas there from Charlie Humphreys to get the move on Kylan Ingram to move up into third position. Charlie Humphreys is having a great little motor race, it has to be said. Nine minutes on the clock just over, you can see. So Humphreys through into third position. Wouldn't it be great if he could start his season with a podium? Now you can see a lot of the drivers have got their waterproofs on because the weather has been so changeable. And look how dry the track actually is at this point. It's been tripping us up all day long. We've had to second guess the weather so many times today. Is it wet? Is it dry? Is it wet? Is it dry? And it changes on the dial. It's been a bit more like spa Francorchamps today than it has been Wilton Mill for the unpredictability of the weather. Stevens, Humphreys and Ingram making their way through. Fifth place, Louis Ross, leaving Freddie Tomlinson behind. There's Christian Lilly, just in front of the 74 of Oakley Keatley, who is another rookie who's had a really strong weekend. And Milo Pilfold is coming back through the field in the number three as well. But the seeded drivers, the top seeds, Christian Lilly, Milo Pilfold, they've really struggled today. They've not had the greatest pace. So it proves that even though you come into the championship as early favourites, you've actually got to have everything strung together. It's not just given to you on a plate. Here's Freddie Tomlinson, again, another driver who's having a great run, although Oakley Keatley gives him a little bit of a barge through Ashby, and he is one of the most impressive rookies I've seen all weekend. Oakley Keatley, we saw him as a great driver in the uh, Bambinos back in the past. He's carried that speed through. Ella Stevens, we just saw her details there, won the pre-final in fantastic fashion. She is actually being caught at the moment by Charlie Humphrey who suddenly seems to have found a second wind here and he's going for the victory. There's Tom Harvey in these conditions. He is the best. He started P2 thanks to his earlier win in the heat, but in these conditions, he seems to be the man on form. Nobody's able to touch him around Wilton Mill in this first round of the championship. Watching other drivers. That's Christian Valverde. He's only been in the country 10 days prior to this meeting, based formerly in Calgary in Canada. This is Humphreys going for the move on Ella Stevens. Stevens goes a little bit wide to gain the grip on the wetter part of the road, and that's enough for Charlie Humphreys to get through. So Charlie Humphrey started in sixth, is now running just behind Tom Harvey in the rankings, although there's still a sizable gap in terms of distance, but Humphreys is getting away from Stevens. This is the fastest we've seen Charlie Humphreys all weekend. He really seems to like the damp conditions in these wet tyres. Now Freddie Tomlinson, oh, up on the inside goes Pilfold, so Pilfold's going to try and catch up to Christian Lilly and Oakley Keatley. And that is the two seed leading this charge, Christian Lilly, one of the coolest personalities in the paddock. You've got to love young Christian. He's got so much sass and he's a brilliant personality. Battling away with Oakley Keatley. He's really struggled here this weekend though. The car just hasn't seemed to be able to give him what he wants out of it. Thanks to the changeable conditions, every session and every race has been a gamble and every time they've rolled the dice, they've come up with snake eyes. It's been an awful weekend in terms of fortunes for Christian Lilly. He's just hoping that at Shennington, it all comes back to him again. Now this is second through to fifth. There is Christian Lilly running in sixth position in front of Oakley Keatley, runner up in last year's championship to Oliver Gray, of course, who's moved on elsewhere. But Christian Lilly, early season favorite coming into this one, but it's not really gone so well for him this time. Oakley Keatley, he was incredible in the shakedown a few weeks ago, and now he's translating that into genuine pace. The novice is doing a brilliant job. Now behind them, they need to keep an eye out because Milo Pilfold is coming back and he's going very quickly. Here's Kylan Ingram, started P5, running P4. So he's there or thereabouts. Louis Ross, well, he's been charging through the field. He dodged the bullet when uh, there was a little bit of uh, melee up at uh, Ashby, and he's managed to get himself right into the top six. So he's doing a good job trying to put Kylan Ingram under pressure through the toe of the boot, and as they come to the heel, the final corner, that's where we saw Nathan Tyke off at the start. Jamie Gurney's running well in the top ten now, the man with the amazing Technicolor go-kart. That's what I'm going to nickname him all through the year, Jamie Joseph Gurney. There we go, up towards uh, Manuel's bank again. 
Oakley Keatley, the rookie, still doing a good job here. Hassling Christian Lilly, not quite close enough to make the move yet. Oh, that was a close one for Ross as he dared Kylan Ingram in the breaking zone. And they almost psyched each other out there as they come up through Inkermans now. This is an opportunity for Ross to go through into Ashby. Is he going to take the move? Not yet. He's just going to see if Ingram makes a mistake first. He's got a good line out of Ashby's, though. He's not quite close enough. Back on board with Tomlinson. Through to the inside at Ashby. And we'll see whether he's able to get himself back into the running. Tomlinson's had a bit of an up-and-down weekend. He's another driver who's never really had the luck in terms of strategy. But when he has got the cart underneath him, he's been pretty rapid. So Tomlinson could still have a good chance of a good result in this final. There's Aidan Hassan battling it out with young Gurney. Those two have been pretty impressive in tricky conditions as well, particularly Aidan Hassan in the wet. He is mighty. It's just a shame the track is now drying quicker than he needs it to at the moment. Four minutes 25 on the clock. And again, Louis Ross, Hassan, Kylan Ingram as they go through Crook. Up out of Fine Lady and up the hill towards Christmas. It is the toughest corner in British karting for me. There's about seven lines you can take in the dry, let alone in the wet. And that is a move again as up out of uh, Christmas comes Oakley Keatley to try and put more pressure onto Christian Lilly. And Kylan Ingram has managed to get himself a little bit of a gap between himself and Louis Ross. Keatley comes out of Ashby, and up they come towards Zulu 1 and Zulu 2. Tricky in the wet, there's two or three lines you can take. Christian Lilly just taking a cautious route at the moment. Holding on in front of Oakley Keatley. Oh, there's a little bit of a twitch you can see there in the wheel. He's still trying to hold on to it. It's tricky because everybody has decided to play safe and start the race on wet tyres. So they obviously had a massive shower before the race. That was the sensible call. But the problem is, when the sun comes out, it drains very quickly. Lily is actually encouraging Keatley, come on, help me, help me. We need to catch these guys further up the road. We could get on the podium if you just help me out. And obviously, Keatley comes, uh, he's done some cadet karting before, but he's originally from the world of Bambinos at MSA level, which is just a time trial rather than a natural race. So he's still learning the art of racecraft as a cadet, but he's doing so very quickly. Oh, that's a bit of a wide line for Ross. It seems to have worked out for him, though. But Christian Lilly is now right on his tail. So Lilly is going to try and make the move. I'm not waiting around for you to make another mistake, Louis. I'm coming past, and Oakley Keatley is going to try and get through as well. That was very tight indeed. Side by side as Ross comes back round the outside and takes him on. Lilly was actually encouraging Ross, help me. No, I'm not going to bother with that. I'm going to get the place back. Thanks very much, Christian. I've been faster than you for most of the weekend, and I'm going to stay that way. Down the back straight towards the boot, into the ankle. And again, it looks like Kylan Ingram is on the move. He's closing up on Ella Stevens. That's the battle for third position. So Ella will want to finish her very strong weekend on the podium after her victory in the pre-final. A shame that it wasn't in front of the camera. She really could have uh, spoiled the rest of the people's show today because she was absolutely masterful in the atrocious conditions we had earlier. Now we've got this magnificent fight. Ross has got Christian Lilly all over the back. Oakley Keatley is actually being very sensible here, sitting a little way back, a couple of cart lengths behind, just to see what these two do. It's very possible that these two could get a little bit too close. Uh, close. Here comes Lilly once again to try. And again, Ross shuts the door, goes out very wide. Lilly's got grip on the inside, but again, there's grip to the outside. Lilly's going to try and come through to the inside of Zulu. Is he going to make it through? Oh, no, there's not enough room. Louis Ross goes for a spin, Oakley Keatley gets through, and Lilly bangs his steering wheel of frustration. He knows there that he's made a big mistake, and he knows that he really shouldn't have committed too deep into that corner, because he just didn't have the space. Ross was giving him as much as he needed, but unfortunately, in the tricky conditions, the cart just slid into the side of Ross's, and there was not really enough room for both to get through, and Ross is spun. Now, Christian will feel quite guilty about that, actually. He does have a very strong, mature head on his shoulders, Christian, and that will eat at him that he's made that mistake. But He'll be strong and he'll come back at Shennington and he'll want to be at the top of the tree. Now we're back on board with Freddie Tomlinson. Past the gantry. Oh, the Digi flag has pointed out a penalty and it's for number two. That is Christian Lilly. So the officials have obviously stated that that is Christian Lilly's fault. What a shame. So uh, unfortunately he is going to take a penalty to that. He's already lost the place to Oakley Keatley to a certain extent. I know he gained an advantage over Ross, but he lost a position in the manoeuvre anyway. I mean, I'm not a racing driver and I'm not a racing official, but that just seems to me like kicking a guy in the ribs when he's already got a broken wrist. It's a bit unfortunate for him. But Ella Stevens under a massive amount of pressure now from Kylan Ingram. And if uh, Ingram gets close enough, he will go for the manoeuvre. He is a last lap chance for Kylan Ingram. He has a great opportunity to get himself onto the rostrum here. 
Now, whatever happens, in sixth position, we have uh, Christian Lilly, but wherever he finishes, he's going to get docked, unfortunately. Now he's got that penalty. I'm not sure how many places he'll lose, but he won't quite finish where he's going to end up on the road. So he'll need to be as high up as he possibly can be. Milo Pilfold sliding around as well. Now the race leader is absolutely a country age ahead of the rest of the field as Charlie Humphreys makes the move to lap the 92 of Callum Lockett. And Ella Stevens, is she going to get held up? No, she doesn't. Oh, that's Oakley Keatley slipping up the inside, though, of Kylan Ingram using the back marker to his advantage. That's a very mature move for Oakley Keatley as a novice. He is driving as if he's been in this championship for over a year. This boy is absolutely on it. And Oakley Keatley is now staring a podium in the face if he can get past Ella Stevens. His, his advantage is that he's very quick in these conditions, but Ella Stevens is experienced in these conditions on this track and in this class. So Ella knows how to hold on to her position. Oakley Keatley has a look. No, you don't. Ella Stevens defending beautifully there, not getting offline, just making sure, no, you're not coming through. It's brilliant watching Ella Stevens come out of her shell. As we go into the last lap, she's got to defend for one more lap around the circuit. This is where the closest battle is. Tom Harvey is an age in front of the rest of the field. He hasn't put a foot wrong, and he is absolutely monstering around this circuit. That's Christian Valverde up the road. They might come up to lapping before the end of this one, but hopefully it's not going to cause too much of an, of an issue. Ella Stevens using as much of the damp part of the circuit as she can to keep those tyres cool. She moves across now to defend. She should be able to get a good exit to keep Oakley Keatley at bay, but can Keatley get a good undercut? No, Stevens positioning the cart exactly where she needs to. Absolutely brilliant. Keatley again, just trying. Oh, Ella Stevens is so good. There's a little bit of a nudge. There's a little bit of contact, but she holds on. And that's going to bring Kylan Ingram back into play. So they come down to the straight for the last time into the toe of the boot. This is an opportunity now. Harvey's coming across the line to take the victory. And Keatley's taken Stevens. And in goes Kylan Ingram. That means that Christian Lilly's going to be third. Christian Lilly's going to be third, but he will be dock positions. So that means... Oh, well, who's going to be third in this race then? We're going to have to do the maths because Pilfold had to avoid. Let's look at it. Ross is awarded third behind Charlie Humphreys. Tomlinson, a valiant fourth position in front of Pilfold and Gurney with Ingram, Stevens, Keatley and Aidan Hassan in the top ten. What a race. Thomas Harvey, that was really hard work, but you made the race come to you in the end. Yeah, in the wet conditions, we just dominated most of the time. And, uh, yeah, we just pulled away, really, after we overtook Ella in that final. Proving to be a nice little rainmaster too. <laughs> I guess so. Good job, man. Good job. Good race for Tom Harvey. He wins in the cadets. Will it be Scott Hundley or Tom Massarella from the front row of the grid in the juniors? Find out in part two.